Hi, society, and welcome to another episode of Real Talk. I'm Alexander Ali, your host, and today we have on the amazing, the incomparable Ernie Carswell with his wonderful southern accent that's going to lull us into how to get ahead. Ernie is very charming. He's from Texas. We're going to get his whole backstory. We're also going to learn how he sold the Brady Bunch house with that icon. You're probably wondering where am I? I'm actually coming to you live from Portland, Oregon, where I'm visiting some family before we lock down again. This is my incredible Uncle Scott's uh, living room. And look, he has amazing taste in color. He always had this eye for color. So I'm coming to you live from Portland, Oregon. Good to see you. Happy Monday. And today, like I said, we've got a lot to get to because we've got Ernie Carswell, who is, of many things, a friend of the show, I mean, a friend of society's, but also 25 years in the business. His career began in the exclusive Highland Park neighborhood of Dallas, Texas. Then he moved to New York and sold uh, some properties on the Upper East Side before moving to Southern California. And he's been here since 1990. So he knows this market in and out. Um, I love Ernie because he also is always willing to take a chance and do a different type of marketing campaign. He's a really fun guy to work with. Ernie's also been in Hollywood Reporter's Hollywood's Top 25 Agents, and no, I'm not done, in Variety's Showbiz Real Estate Elite every year, and even Billboard's Top 15 Real Estate Agents who are selling homes to musicians. So, uh, I'm excited to have him on. We're going to see some listings, and we're going to also uh, dive into how, how he got ahead. Hello, Sharona. Hello, Ingrid. Everyone's here. Hello, hello. Oh, sorry about that. So also, if you guys have questions, we're going to run down it with Ernie. I mean, I got to work with Ernie on a project on woods. We called it Enchanted Woods, and we turned the whole thing into this immersive Instagram museum. Back when you could have an open house party, that was the way to do it. So we had we turned everything into like an Instagram kind of walk through museum of ice cream where people took pictures and we had influencers come and we got the cover of the New York Times real estate section and I was really really proud of that publicity because 60 days later Ernie sold the project. So it was about engaging people on a different level. It's about doing an open house that was going to generate interest and get the type of publicity around a trend that we were doing that became super popular. We used the same concept of Instagram museums for other open houses, and it became a very big win for 2018. I think we did that. It's a long time ago. Um, I don't see Ernie on yet. Hello, hello. There he is. Ernie, let's look at Coming to you from Portland, Oregon. Because I can't miss the show. Ernie, how are you? How you doing, Alexander? Oh my God, it's so good to see you. Wow. I, I'm doing crazy. this the best I can. I've got the AirPods in, if that's okay, or I can take them out. We'll do it raw and natural. What do you prefer? Your sound is incredible. I see good? the earbuds in. Yes. All you right, here we are. Let me introduce you again, Ernie, because I know you. I've had the pleasure of working with you. But Ernie Carswell, a Hollywood Reporter Top 25 agent, a Billboard Top 15 agent, showbiz real estate elite, and billions in sales since he started his career 25 years ago in the business. Ernie, tell me. Oh, my how God. He, I know. No, I'm sorry for the numbers. But Ernie, the legend Jacob Green is saying, tell us, you did, you're from Texas, right? I started my real estate business in Texas, but I'm actually from the Carolinas. The Carolinas. You have that yeah. southern drawl that's so charming. It's there. It's there. Yeah. So do you, do you feel like that helps you in L.A.? Do you lay it on really thick? Uh, no, I don't lay it on thick because I was a Manhattan broker also. And, uh, you know, the Manhattanites just didn't really take to too much hick talk. So I learned to speak in a more regulated uh, tonality, hopefully like I'm doing now, but it yes. eventually would sneak out the sides and they would say, where are you from? And uh, I'd have to be honest and tell them I'm not from New York City, but they already knew that. <laughs> so do you still do you still practice in New York City or you fo focus, focus solely on Los Angeles? Well, my company, Douglas Elliman, is based in New York City. And when I was a New York broker, of course, I was with Douglas Elliman. So for me, it's like coming home again. So yes, I'm very much in touch with New York brokers and my family there of broker friends. I have no living family there. My family's still down in the South. 
but oh. uh, my broker family is in New York City. Yeah. I love that your broker family, you've been with Douglas Elliman for a while. I wanted to ask you, Ernie, about, you know, one of your most iconic sales of last year had to be, we do a little segment called Behind the Sale. So oh, I wanted yeah. you to tell us a little bit, if you can, what can you tell us about this iconic home that you sold for over double? There's a story about a man named Brady, right? Is that what we're talking <laughs> about? Okay. Uh, and I grew up with it the first time it came around, by the way, whereas all of you folks saw the reruns, I guess. But yeah, it was very much a part of the American fabric. And uh, I was honored to represent it. And it did get some press. Uh, that didn't surprise me, but the amount of press the Brady Bunch sale generated blew my mind. It almost, you know, wrecked the internet for a day or two. Um, <laughs> but when my clients, these are longtime clients of mine that I'd known for a decade, and I'd sold them a house in Bel Air, and they had homes in Carmel and Manhattan Beach. And so they asked me to stop by and see a house that they owned in Studio City. And I was like, sure. And I well, drove up in front start, of the I house. Wanna, yeah. I, before you start, I just want to tell the audience, this is the Brady Bunch house. Ernie That's had right. the listing in 2019. And what happened was he, he put it on the MLS and it became a very public bidding war. So Ernie, you Ooh. tell take it from here. Tell us about this sale of the Brady Bunch house. Well, you know, it had a very strange trajectory because the, my clients that owned the house did not realize it was going to be this much of an event. And when I drove up in front of it, it did look familiar. And I thought, huh, this looks really familiar. And when we got inside, nothing inside looked familiar. The house was solid pink, which the Brady Bunch on TV was not, obviously. So yes. that threw me a little bit. But then they said, oh, yeah, this house was used for the Brady Bunch. And I said, well, hold on, hold on. This is going to be important. This, oh, no, Ernie, it's not that important. Believe me, people don't care. So as you know, did people they think did that care. Just because, did they think no one would care because it was just the exterior and not the interior? I think it was just by this point, 30 years later, they were annoyed. And it was kind of like, <laughs> like, please, you know, this is not news anymore. And actually it was. And I think uh, they were thrilled. We launched the house and um, we, we priced it fairly. And it just took a life of its own. I mean, it well, doubled take us, up. Uh, take us through it. Like, what did you price it at? And oh, God. Alexander, because, I'm trying to remember. Oh, no, I can um, tell you, you priced it at like one eight seven. Yeah, one nine one. Yeah, okay. So I knew it was like, like right one eight one nine. nine. And right, then was the guys, top of the market. Is the for top that. of the market, and I'm watching from my computer. You listed. I'm like, wow, Ernie's got the Brady Bunch house with all this pedigree, <laughs> and you list it, and you don't think anything's going to happen, and then Lance Bass comes in and tries to buy it, and then he gets outbid or something happened. Lance and I have a history. Forgive me, Lance, <laughs> if you're listening. But uh, I sold Lance's own house to Sumner Redstone back when Sumner um, was chairman of Paramount, and, you know, Nickelodeon, Blockbuster, CBS, all of that. Uh, Mr. Redstone is still alive, but very ill. But um, Sumner bought Lance's house and I negotiated the deal. So we had a little history there. So he felt very comfortable in calling me. Yes. about it. And uh, I really thought Lance was going to take it away and own the Brady Bunch house. But fate had something else in mind. And, and so then he everyone thinks it's going to Lance Bass is going to win it. And it's going to be this dream. It's very public. But then I another thought, buyer swoops in. Oh, yeah. The big TV networks got involved. And I mean, people were flying here from New York. We had Broadway show producers coming here thinking they were going to buy it. I was like, OK. It just took an amazing mushroom cloud of, you know, just living excitement uh, from all corners. And ultimately, as you know, HGTV, the Discovery Channel, did prevail. Um, it, it did upset Lance. Um, and I think there were some things in the press about that. But then he made good. And he was everything's on the, they, fine. They did a show about the, They actually did a show where they refurbished oh, the house. Yeah, they yep. had all the Brady's come back, and didn't Lance make an appearance on the show? I I believe he did, um, and he's a good guy. Come on, I, you gotta love Lance. He's you know he loved the fact that the house meant something to the American uh, 
popular culture, history. And so I, I admire what he tried to do. And I'm sorry it didn't happen, but... Um, and HGTV bid him out, they did, paid double. They paid something like $3.8 million for this house. We had a refab yeah. show where they had the Property Brothers refurbish the inside and then they turned it into like a museum. That's right. So even hotels were trying to buy it to create it as a part of their hotel for weddings to happen there. So a lot of people lost wow. out. And, and it uh, didn't look like that on the inside? At not all. at all. It looked like Aunt Susie Patty's forgotten, you know, bedroom. Uh, it was just so nothing inside. But uh, sorry for my clients who might hear me say this, but they'll admit it. That's why they thought nothing would happen. They said, surely nobody's going to be interested in this old thing. Mm -hmm. so, but they were. They wow. Were. I, Ernie, that's such an amazing story. And I, I associate you so much with historic architecture, <laughs> like mid-century homes. You, you take a lot of mid-century homes. So this is just another feather in your cap. Congratulations. Well, thank you for that. We do have a great mid-century home right now in the Hollywood Hills. And, yes, um, it's coming up. Do you want yeah. to talk about that one first? Well, why not? You know, uh, celebrities are sort of all around this. It's, it's adjacent to where the Halls used to live and where one of my clients um, had her home. And in fact, when I was showing Katy Perry's home often, the tennis court that you would see at the lower portion of what appeared to be Katie's property, they would say, oh, is that the tennis court? I'd say, no, no, that's another property. And sure enough, it is. And that's the property that we're now preparing to bring to market. It's a legitimate, authentic mid-century um, built by, well, designed and uh, drawn by America's foremost and only ethnic origin mid-century architect. His name is Eugene Choi, Chinese American. Wow. So it was photographed by the world famous Julia Schulman for the, um, uh, the, the history books there. And so we're bringing it on the market at 8150000 It's got a tennis court. Um, it's uh, the use of two acres of land. It's right next to Runyon Canyon, if uh, listeners know where Runyon Canyon yes. is. Yes, I was going to um, say, you can see this house from Runyon Canyon, that's actually Runyon Canyon Mountain right there, you guys. So when you're walking, you can see down on it. And I've always seen this house, Arnie, and said, that's a gorgeous mid-century right there. Someone's going to swoop in and buy that. It's amazing. The photographs are amazing. You've got to come see it, Alexander. I'll take you oh through it God. personally. I would and, love uh, to. Yeah. So that's something we're very excited about. And it's, it's in immaculate condition. I mean, they've obviously pumped a lot of money into the driveway, into the keeping the, the authenticity of the pool and the beams, the slatted roof. It's Most really definitely. Gorgeous. It's a museum piece. And so really, I would say this to any buyer that's interested, don't come looking for the latest toys and, and gadgets that are in all of these trophy homes being built now. Come for the authentic museum piece and the trophy of having a true American mid-century architectural icon. That's what this presents. Ugh, it's gorgeous. It's, it's so magazine photo shoot. It's so dwell. It's all those things. And when you're looking at these homes, Ernie, because you sell a lot of these mid-century homes, what do you think, who do you think they usually go to? Is it to somebody who wants <laughs> to preserve? Is it a hipster? Who's your typical buyer? Well, you know what, Alexander, I'm going to admit it, but I'll immediately say I never said it. I'm a mid-century piece. So that's why I love <laughs> mid-century architecture. Um, <laughs> This house was built the year I was born. So that's all I'll say. Oh. But, uh, you know, the mid-century architecture has a beautiful streamlined simplicity to it. I think it's a pushback against all of the robber baron mansions that had been built uh, in the late 1800s in Newport, uh, Rhode Island, and just these huge Vanderbilt spreads all over exactly. America. Yeah. This was a beautiful perfectly clean streamlined expression of home living and it was what many people in the 50s and 60s wanted and uh, it was their piece of america so here's a home that remains and it's from that period and stunning views too right like i've seen this house perfectly framed views Perfect. of downtown los angeles perfectly framed beautiful that's what we're not showing you in these photos the view is incredible the fact that you can run to walk to running canyon is incredible um did any famous people live in the house right? well billy idol oh, oh, oh uh, well we've got billy idol on the street living nearby so uh, and i can only say that because it's on the google map and it says the billy idol <laughs> museum but it's actually his home 
Um, it's very secure though, so uh, there, you know there's no danger there. Uh, you know the hills are peppered around here with many um, many people in the public eye because living in the Hollywood Hills gives you the feeling of privacy and being in the country or remote, mm -hmm. and yet you're looking at the city. Los Angeles is right there, and yet it feels a hundred miles away. So that's the beauty of living in the Hollywood Hills. Um, this house has not necessarily had one of those uh, in the public eye owners, but it's been in one family for decades. And so that's oh, why it's so well preserved. So well, well preserved. preserved. You've got to check it out. And four bedrooms, four baths for 8.1 uh, and historic architecture right on Runyon Canyon. I love this that's one. Right. You're right. There's a lot of celebrities who live in there. Let's pop over real fast, Ernie. Now we've talked about a past sale. We've talked about a current sale. Now we're going to do rapid fire questions for you about wow. real estate and your career. Are you ready? Let's go. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. It's called the ABCs of Real Talk. We play it all the time with our guests. So your first question is, you have a billboard on Sunset Boulevard mm -hmm. that is going to say a mantra of yours. What would your billboard say, Ernie Carswell, on Sunset Boulevard? The fine art of representing you. Ooh, good one. Because selling real estate in this city is truly an art form. We have many pretenders who want to be real estate agents. They see these TV shows and it looks so glamorous. It looks so exciting. Yeah, that's, that's, not, that's not reality, folks. Not at all. No. My good friends, the Altman brothers, will tell you that. It is very much uh, for entertainment purposes. But the art of selling real estate at this level in a city as complex and as driven as Los Angeles is requires skill and an art form. And my buddies, the Altmans, certainly have that. And Ernie, your clients really stick with you through thick and thin. They're very loyal. I think it's because of, the, of what you do for them. How do you represent your clients for that longevity client? What do you do to keep them around? This is a relationship business. It's not a business of houses and sticks and bricks. It's a business of relationships and building trust. So once I have worked with a client and they understand that they can believe what I tell them, that I am real and I mean what I say and I'm not going to let them down if I have it within my ability to keep their goals and their dreams captured for them, they stay with me because I'm telling the truth. And what a novel thought that somebody would tell the truth in this city. But uh, you tell the truth, you build trust with your clients, and they stay with you for life. I mean, don't you stay with your doctor for as long as you can and your attorney? Why don't you stay with your real estate agent? Well, if you can trust them, you will. I love that. I love that. Okay, okay, let's give you a curveball. What have you become okay. better at saying no to during COVID? What's one thing that you've like, you know what? Enough of that. I'm, I think saying no is very important in this business. It's as important as saying yes. So what have you become better Ooh, you, saying no to? You have stumped me because I like to tell people yes and try to be the <laughs> doer. But uh, I think just really, no, I can't come. I'm not coming there. And uh, I'm just, you know, I'm finding out how to work at home and uh, not going anywhere. Uh, we're just beginning to get out and see some homes, as you know, but it's a very different way of seeing homes. So I've, I've had to say no a lot recently during COVID. Okay, well then we'll come back to these and let's go to your next listing. It's 12.995 in on Doheny in the Bird Streets, five bedroom, eight bath. We saw the Bird Streets struggle in 2019. Do you feel like in 2020 they're back? Let's be real about the Sunset Strip and the Bird Streets. I live in them, so I can talk freely about them. Um, yeah. It's the front battleground uh, for buyers and developers. It's, it's because everyone wanted a piece of the action. And this is a, an example of too much of a good thing is not good. And that's where often developers pile on and just overdo and right now there's just been too much development, too much building because everybody wants a piece of the Bird Street pie. That's and so true. Uh, it's kind of gotten out of control. So, you know, we're not out of the tough times, but a home like this one we're speaking about, 1860 Doheny, the price is very attractive. We have priced it 
to be on the front of the battleground and to win. This is gorgeous, yes. It's an amazingly private, beautiful, innovative house. It's three stories and it looks like it's only two stories. The mm -hmm. master suite is just a sumptuous abode of five or six rooms that look out at the ocean in Century City. So it's got views, but it also has a private courtyard swimming pool that is like, you know, your own little resort right off your main rooms. And uh, so that's not about the view, that's about the intimacy and the privacy. And then your bedrooms have all of so this it's explosive view. It's built like a U, and you have the inside cut out. It is. And so when you see it at the street, you're seeing only a tiny glimpse of the house. It's just a small reveal. It's a much larger home than it looks from the street. And this Which area I think like is a good thing. You know, we yeah. live in the city of excess when everybody's got everything out to show, you know. Why not have something that's a surprise? You open the front door, and then they go, wow, this is I more love, than I, I thought. Them. I, and I love the movie theater, the fabric walls that they put yeah, on. Yeah, you can feel them, the touching, <laughs> feeling walls. You can tell the finishes in this home are really, really beautiful. They and are beautiful. Uh, the stone. Uh, so so this, uh, this is the, the dining room. That's the dining room, looking right out to that sculptural pool in the oasis of the courtyard. It's just such a backdrop to be looking at while mm -hmm. you're eating your spaghetti, you know? I, I love a raised pool, especially at yeah. night. Look at this shot, looking it's into the house. It's dramatic. It's just so gorgeous. Beautiful. So is this a, did this just finish or is this a- list Brand new construction. Over? It's, it, it finished last year. Um, we had to mark the price down and I'll tell all of our listeners right now, we're in price discussions yet again. So 12,995, very interested in selling. So expect that price to change or just come at us with an offer and we're gonna do the right thing. This is beautiful. Um, 1860 North Doheny. So it's above Sunset Plaza. Easy to get to everything. Five bedroom, eight bath. You have a very eclectic mix of listings, Ernie. Is that so that you can, why do you take on listings with a lot of different looks? It's because how the inside of my mind works. I'm a very eclectic up here too. <laughs> I'm a mess. Uh, hopefully a happy mess, not a mess mess. But um, yeah, I love the diversity of life and the diversity of travel and the diversity of real estate. The beautiful thing about Los Angeles real estate that those real estate agents like me get to sell is our diverse architecture. We've talked about mid-century, we've got ultra-modern, we've got traditional, we've got English Tudor, mansion, neoclassical. You go to other cities in the United States and they just all look the same. And the beautiful thing here is that we can specialize in many different types of real estate architecture. It's thrilling, it's thrilling. Oh, and Ernie, I love that you, so you've been doing this uh, here in Los Angeles since 1990. How big That's is right. your team? Uh, 18. 18. 18. Mm -hmm. Wow. And 18. what number were you on Real Trends? I know you hit Real Trends list this year. Well, yeah. Every... Well, you know, God, here's the thing that Real Trends does. Um, they have all these different categories. They categorize us as a big team. So no. we're in. Yes. And uh, God loves those Altman brothers. They get to be a medium sized team. Yes, so apparently. Thing about Real Trends is so messed up. So the thing is, is that our category has teams that have multiple cities, you know, they're in five or six different cities and 100 agents in it. And we're only 18. Still, we were number 35 out of a million one applicants That's crazy. And, and practicing. So we're That's 35. Amazing. I'd like to be in the top 10 out of a million one, but uh, being 35 is not terrible. I tell you, their ranking system's a bit crazy, but congratulations yeah. on hitting the list. You hit every list, and I think uh, you hustle. So you've got a team of 18 uh, and, and just motivating them during this time. What's one thing that you use to motivate your team? I love being a mentor. I love being an uncle to my nieces and nephews. You know, I love being a big brother. So it all kind of harmonizes like that, Alexander. I love teaching the business and the craft of what we do. Remember, it's an art. So I feel it's very much like an artist taking up the paintbrush and, 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 and creating a, a palette for clients to be served the best with. And that's what I want the agents that work with me to do. We want to really care and to connect with our clients so that they become clients for life. And that's what I try to teach my agents. Corey Charlupski from Eklund Gomes. I love team him. Says, 
I can listen to Ernie talk real estate for hours. What a legend. Ernie, we're going to test. I love Corey. Your, now we're going to test your and the audience's uh, pricing abilities. I'm going to okay. show you a property and you are going to guess the price in a game called Guess the Price. Guess the Price. Guess the price. Yes. So this right. property it hit the market. It's very public. A celebrity lives here. It's actually, so let me show you the first picture. Uh-huh. Guess the price. It's Will Arnett. Do not Google. Um, and he is selling his home, which is uh, about four bedrooms, five bathrooms, 5,228 square feet. It's modern. It's in Coldwater Canyon. Again, which four, side of the hill? Because Coldwater uh, Canyon has two <laughs> values if you're on the west side <laughs> or on the yeah. north or on the, you know, the valley side. You're so right. I'm going to say this is the valley side. Oh, property price just changed. Property price just changed. Four bedroom, five bedroom, 5,228 square feet. Uh, here it is. It's got nice finishes, but I'm going to guess. It does. It's beautiful. Look at that view. I think it's on the yeah. valley side. Yeah, it looks like it's looking, yeah. So. Wait, I'm going to give you options. Okay. Here it is. Nice. That's Your options beautiful. are, Actually, is it that's A, 14.5 million, B, 19.5 million, or C, $10.9 million? I'm going to say 10.9 comment section there is a delay if you would like to jump in comment section will win everyday essence skincare my favorite organic skincare line there's a toner with 85 vitamins and minerals and there's also a face oil ernie we're going to send some of this to you as well oh really i i'm in need of that please <laughs> you put the face oil on uh laura cordova <laughs> says 10.9 laura's always in the comment section anybody else with guesses on is it a 14.5 b 19.5 or c 19.9 ricky says i'm at 14 good guess the correct answer is drum roll 10.995 million dollars so ernie gets it right just offer some pictures at you win the everyday essence skincare ernie and so also does laura cordovano that's great so that's much. great michael that's you're great. a little bit late you're a little bit late um, okay, so Ernie I like Jackson. Will. You know, he's a good actor. I've I've watched him on TV. He's amazing. Yeah. Uh, but back to you and your game. The ABCs of Real Talk. More insight from Ernie Carswell. Ernie, best closing advice. Something you do when someone's almost to the finish line and you take them through to the final. You push them through. What's your? I'm gonna, what's your? I'm going to tell you something very important. The agent cannot want the deal more than the client. So you let the client lead when it's time to close. If the agent and if a buyer or a seller smells that the agent wants it more than them, you're doomed. You cannot do that. You must let the client lead. And it actually becomes a very good closing tool because when they realize that there's no leverage from me, the agent, I'm just there to be sure that they are well served. You'd be surprised how they really do the right thing most of the time. I've rarely have I seen a client, you know, run off the train tracks at the closing moment. If you let them lead, but too often the agents are strong arming and, you know, trying to, you know, kiss up to them about something. You cannot do that. You must never want the deal more than the client. The client must want the deal. Even if you think that the client is by cutting off their nose to spite their face, even if you think they're doing the wrong thing, Ernie? You know what? I'm in the business for many more decades, I hope. So we'll just sell them another one or we'll sell it next. That is great advice. I don't think we've ever heard that on Real Talk. Someone cannot be desperate. Yeah. Let the client lead. So let's say you bring them an offer and mm -hmm. it's a low ball offer and they say, no, I want double that you go back and let them lead and say you want double, even if you think it's a good fit? Like, give me the an client, example. Well, well, here, okay, so I, I think what that could sound ridiculous, let the client lead, if you don't understand that my job has been done by that point. I have educated them, 
as to what the right decision should be, but I've not needed it more than they want it. I'm not going to try to drive them and twist them and throw them against the wall. And you got to do it. You got to do it. That works really well on the TV shows. It doesn't work well in life. Okay. So um, you, you must educate the buyer or the seller that this is the best offer you're going to receive, but you can't say it that way. You've got to be sure that they understand it's the best offer they're going to receive. And if they fail, you haven't failed. And maybe you decide you don't want to work with them anymore as the agent. But, you know, our job is to educate our clients like an attorney. I have attorneys. I want them to educate me. What does my living trust mean? You know, and I trust mm -hmm. that attorney and I let that attorney educate me. Then I decide if I want the trust or not. You see? I love that. Okay. That's so what, that, what does that design? I love that, Ernie. Great advice. Best closing advice. Next one. It's 1999. What's advice you'd give to your younger agent self <laughs> arriving with stars in his eyes to Hollywood, driving down the hall? And what's, what, what advice would you give young Ernie Carswell? Don't wait to believe in yourself. Believe in it now. Believe in oh yourself my God. now. I think you should also have that be what your billboard would say. Don't okay, wait good. to believe in yourself. That is amazing. That's right. Tell me about that lesson and how you I, You know, I was a young agent in New York City. I had a Southern accent. I looked like I was 12 years old. So um, I, I didn't have a lot of confidence that people would take me seriously. I even changed my name from Ernie to Ernest so that they would think I was older and sound more, you know. <laughs> experienced. The fact is, is I should have known right then I had all the skills within myself that I have these decades later. It was still, I'm still Ernie. I've always been Ernie, but mm -hmm. I just didn't believe in myself when I was a young agent. And um, I think it's important to believe in yourself. We have the skills. You've got to tap into them. I, I agree. That's something I learned about myself during COVID. I think during COVID, it's been really uh, eye-opening to your own personal yeah. power that you have. Uh, beautiful advice, Ernie. And the last one, because you. you're doing so well, even though we've been talking for half an hour, I have to keep talking to you. What's the best gift to give yourself under $100 right now? Time off. <laughs> Time off. It's free, people. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's something I've not learned um, the problem with COVID is that we're working all the time now. I mean, I don't know how to stop working because it's now moved to my home. Yes. So um, yeah, that's the problem. That's the gift uh -huh. I need to give myself. A little bit more breathing room and a little more time off. Oh my gosh. So sorry about that. Let's go, well, before you take some time off, let's go to your very last <laughs> listing so we can show this beauty off. It's 14.49. Stone Canyon in Bel Air, six bedroom, eight bath, the most expensive listing we have today. Tell us, Ernie, why do we only have a handful of photos? Is this owner private? Well, you know, it, this is a, an exact case of saving the best to last. Um, a little bit of drama there. This is a new construction home in Bel Air on Stone Canyon, which is one of the most beautiful streets in Los Angeles. Most people will agree with that because yes. you get on it, all, you come through the Bel Air East Gates and just like you're going in to see the Beverly Hillbillies or something. And, um, and then you're in the domain of the most beautiful estates in the Western United, in our nation, in the Western part of it. And so Stone Canyon is just a beautiful experience to drive. And of course the Hotel Bel Air is on Stone Canyon. Mm -hmm. This home, my problem with this home is that the photos cannot capture how rich and, and organic and united with nature it is. Um, these are staged interiors, so that's not someone's home furniture. You know, it's just what staging companies have tried to create there. But the things about the home that will last forever are its connection to nature. It's on almost an acre of private land. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's just beautiful and flat and sunny, which is not very often found in Stone Canyon. And um, we've had some very interesting people looking at it recently, and it's priced beautifully for a product like this. I've had top agents in the city say there's no better product at this price in L.A. So, and you get the beautiful Bel Air zip code for 14.490, six bedrooms, eight baths. You can tell by looking at these photos, Ernie, that the finishes 
are really they're, quality. The they're inlay all of the tile, the, the marble slab that they've chosen down to this light, bright and airy kitchen with the warm French oak and the beautiful gold accents. It's, it's really spectacular. And I think, you know, Vesta did a good job on the staging, but you can see the bones of the house are really where it's at. That's right. We love Vesta and they did a beautiful job. Um, but, you know, the grounds are so beautiful. There's a mm -hmm. guest house. Um, mm -hmm. You're just in an exotic locale and yet you're three and a half minutes from Sunset Boulevard. You know, it's just, you're just pulled away into a different reality. That's the wonderful thing about Stone Canyon. I just, this, this picture is enough. So it's you're amazing. seeing a lot of action on this one. Which of the three properties you've shown us are you seeing the most action on? in this post COVID time? I'm gonna be honest, the one we're looking at right here has had yes. the most action, yeah. And it I launched think. right as COVID was descending. So I think that's the problem or it would already be gone. And what are you doing right now um, for open houses during COVID? Are you just taking two people in at a time? Uh, we're maintaining all the safe regulations. We wish, we wish some of our other states in the nation would do the same. But anyway, we're maintaining all the, the safety regulations. There's no such thing as an open house right now, but we're beginning to do our team caravans. We tried the first one last week because inside the oh. companies, you can do some caravanning. So we are doing that and it was great. Um, still using safe distancing and you know sanitizer and masks, but at least we can get our own team into various homes and see them as a group. Well, Ernie, that's fantastic. That's good to know that you guys are starting to caravan again. Things might get back to normal. From your behind the sale <laughs> of the Brady Bunch to your current listing for 14.9, Ernie Carswell is a leader in real estate. You're still a leader. You'll always be a leader, Ernie. And I think people uh, really love working with you. So thank you so much for taking the time to share with thank us you. your career and your listings and what your billboard would say, yeah. which again is don't wait to believe in yourself. I love that. I like it. I like Thank it. you, Ernie. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. We'll post this to our IGTV. Bye, Ernie. We'll post Bye -bye. this to our, IG <laughs> to our IGTV later today so you guys can see it and you guys can always catch it on our IGTV channel. Thank you, Ernie, for joining. And tomorrow we will see you at 11.11. Bye-bye.